Hello and welcome back to Few Tutorials. I'm your tutor Mavish once again back with Level 4B Part 2 in which I will present how PC Eigenfaces method recognizes faces. And again I have tried to keep this tutorial simple as, as simple as possible without any mathematical details. So moving on with our learning objectives. The learning objectives of this tutorial will be first off to recap part one so that you have uh, fresh you have fresh in your mind and then we will move on with the working principle of PC eigenfaces uh, in the light of how it recognizes a face and the prerequisites of PC eigenfaces and the major part of this tutorial is going to consist of the algorithm steps of PC eigenfaces. They will be animated so that you understand them better. The steps will be to first to train the recognizer and the, the remaining steps would be to uh, recognize the unknown face. Now starting with recap of part one. Recap of part one I mean uh, level 4B part one. Okay so what is PCA and what does it do? This was something we had covered in the previous tutorial. For details I highly recommend you watch that tutorial but if you have I'll just refresh your memory once again. Now PCA, as we read earlier, the PCA was invented in 1901 by Carl Pearson and nowadays is mostly used as a tool in exploratory data analysis for making predictive models, for example, face recognition. And PCA is the simplest of true eigenvector based multivariate analyses. And this is one of the reasons why we had selected PCA in the first place. Now often used to reveal the internal structure of the data in a way which best depicts the major features or directions in the data, that is, it depicts the variance in the data. Now for uh, PCA how it works is that if a set of images uh, when we're talking about face recognition for example then we uh, we'd say this that if a set of images which is by the way a multivariate data set is visualized as a set of coordinates in a high dimensional data space with one axis per variable such as this training set consisting of M images and each pixel in this image is one uh, axis is one dimension in the high dimensional data space. Then PCA can supply the user with a lower dimensional picture, a shadow of the set when viewed from its most informative viewpoint. And that shadow would be something like this for this training set. The principal component analysis uh, as a definition, I would say, principal component analysis is a mathematical procedure that uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a set of M phase images, M could be 100, 200, any integer, into a set of K uncorrelated variables called eigenfaces. Now, these eigenfaces are actually the principal components of the training set, the set of M phase images. As you can see over here, these are the uh, first image, second image, and so on. The mth image, total images are m images. And the transformation, the orthogonal transformation that PCA does is this. That is, it generates eigenfaces, the principal components for this set of face images. The number of eigenfaces, that is the number of principal components, is always less than or equal to the number of original images. That is, k is always less than m. For example, k was the total number of eigenfaces calculated. It will always be less than the total number of images in the training set. Now, this transformation is defined in such a way that the first eigenface shows the most dominant direction of features of the training set of the images and each succeeding eigenface in turn shows the next most dominant possible directions under the constraint that it be co uncorrelated to the preceding eigenface. Now, do note that to reduce calculations needed for finding these eigenfaces, the dimensionality of the original training set is reduced before eigenfaces are calculated. Just to make the point clear, I have given this uh, image over here. As you can see that we said that the first principal components of the first eigenfaces will show more variations in the data. And as they proceed along, they will show more noise and lesser uh, features or lesser variance in the data. As you can see, you see that this is proceeding from left to right and from top to bottom. And you can see that these eigenfaces towards this end. There are more noise, more and more noise. So 
uh, by having this fact in mind, since eigenfaces show directions in the training set, and each preceding eigenface shows less directions and more noise, as I just explained over here, only the first few eigenfaces, say for example these k uh, eigenfaces, are selected, whereas the rest of the eigenfaces are discarded. So this is just ma majorly noise and we discard it because we don't want our result of uh, recognition to be distorted by the noise present in the data. So this is the crux of applying PC eigenfaces. You should remember that. The crux is that you discard, you first off analyze a data set and then you separate, you generate some principal components from it, that is the eigenfaces from a set of face images and then you discard the noise that you see for example the, this was the noisy bit and you only keep the significant features that you can get and this way the uh, the training set of face images that is a data set can be represented in smaller terms for example I said that K is less than M you can represent the training set of M images in only uh, in only k eigenfaces. So for example 400 images were represented in terms of 100 eigenfaces only. So this is the crux of PCA. Now these k significant eigenfaces can safely represent the whole original training set because they depict the major features or directions that make up the data set as we just saw in the previous image. Therefore, each image in the original training set can be represented in terms of these k eigenfaces. And in fact, even the input image called the test image or the uh, or you could say the unknown face is also represented in terms of these k eigenfaces. And the eigenface representation would be something like this. For example, this image belonged to the training set containing m images. And it can be represented in terms of k, uh, k eigenfaces as a weighted sum of each of the eigenfaces, each of the k eigenfaces. This is the weight vector. Now, weight vector tells you that which proportion, how much proportion of which eigenfaces making up this image. So that was all for a recap of part one. It was more like uh, facts about PCA, about what it is and how it works, what it does. Now we are going to move on to part two.